Hi. The purpose of this uh, short presentation is to show you how to avoid irreversible periimplantitis caused by improper cementation protocol, especially when you deal with cement retained restorations. My name is uh, Dr. Tony Daher. I'm a board certified prosthodontist and I'm a co director of the Global Dental Implant Academy, known as GDIA. The problems that we encounter when we do cement retained restoration is the cement left behind. Dr. Wilson in his publication in 2009 told us that 80% of the periimplantitis is direct result of bacterial colonization of extruded cement left behind during the cementation of these uh, cement retained restorations. And we know for a fact this is gonna create some kind of a fistula formations, and this is what we refer to it in pathology is the giant cell foreign body reactions. But when the nice thing about it is, he took a sample of 50 patients from his practice with periimplantitis, he cleaned, scaled them, and gave him some antibiotherapy, and one month later, he did a post-operatory check and he found out that it's 100% complete recovery. And Dr. Wadwani did many research on this uh, problem and he found out that uh, to be able to control the cementation process, you have to control the amount, the speed, and the type of cement that you're gonna be doing. And if you notice is, it's always better to put it at the cervical area than at an occlusal area when you deal with uh, cement, uh, when during the cementation process. And he published a very nice book about cementation and implant uh, uh, dentistry, and it's a nice uh, book to have and give you a lot of practical clinical uh, tips. Cementation protocol, the technique, this is how Dr. Wadwani recommend your, uh, recommend your uh, cementation uh, protocol to be. Uh, first of all, when you get your uh, cement retained restoration with a custom abutment, you take the crown, you place some PVS uh, type of uh, like a bite uh, polyvinyl siloxane, and the purpose is to duplicate uh, the ab abutment uh, shape. And then you uh, place the abutment, you torque it to the manufacturer recommendations, and then you load the crown with a temp bond, a temporary cement, this is what Dr. Wadwani recommends. You place the uh, duplicate abutment inside the crown, and what's gonna happen is uh, most of the cement will stay on your um, uh, uh, abutment uh, copy, and then you add a small dab uh, of uh, cement and you place it in and then you clean up the excess and it's ready to go. So this is a very nice uh, uh, protocol to follow and certainly you can also apply that technique when you're dealing with cementation of an implant bridge. Another thing is uh, Dr. Woodwani, uh, Dr. Wilson, uh, mostly in his uh, a different article, he found out that uh, which one is better to have a screw retained restoration or cement retained restoration. In his study, the conclusion of the study is soft tissue respond more favorably to screw retained crowns when compared to cement retained restorations. And also this uh, survey from a international lab in Southern California, Glidewell Lab, uh, he told us that when he did a survey that uh, the sales of screw retained crowns grew uh, more than 88%. In summary, certainly you have to uh, adequate select a uh, good abutment margins, uh, preferably to be at the gum line or above the gum line. Optimum abutment height and taper for better retention for your cement retained crowns. And certainly uh, you have to have a good uh, cementation protocol. And the best cement, according to Dr. Wadwani, is the TEM bond. And uh, certainly um, the second choice is the flex uh, zinc phosphate. In the end, I'd like to thank you for your attention and f don't forget to get involved with the Global Dental Implant Academy, GDIA. See you then.